guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am taking you through my process of doing a closet purge using the KonMari method. I'm sure you've heard of this book. If you haven't, where have you been? It is The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, which I will leave in the description box down below. But this book is my go-to when it comes to just doing like seasonal or just occasional purges of items, especially with my closet and with clothing. But you will see throughout the video that there are certain things that I do that I don't do according to the book. And this is just for different reasons, whether it be due to my lifestyle or living with my husband who is not necessarily a minimalist. I use her method as kind of like a guideline, but I also have my own guiding questions. I have my own ways of doing things, which I will discuss throughout the video. So this is my closet currently. It gives me a little bit of anxiety. In the beginning of 2017, it was much more minimal, but things just kind of came in under dif different circumstances. For example, I went on a vacation and we went to a tropical place. So I bought things like this to wear around the beach all day because I had nothing in my closet that was like tropical vacation friendly. Um, I was gifted pieces from companies with causes that I wanted to work on that I believed in pieces from family members. I've talked about this before on my blog, but like most of the stuff in my closet is my husband's stuff. This is pretty much all I have. And here, I do not have a dresser, so everything is in here. I'm ready to just get it back to being very simple, very cold, just, I need, I need more function here. I can't deal with this, so we gotta get this started. So when you walk straight into the closet over here, I have um, pajamas, those are swimsuits, sports bras and like bra couplets, underwear, uh, and there are socks and my husband's underwear. Here we have shoes, and over here we have more shoes, but I have like one pair in there. Jeans and pants and just whatever, and then workout pants here. Step one of the KonMari method is to collect all of your clothing and accessory items in your entire house. This means your laundry, your dirty clothes, your closets, your dressers. And once you have collected them, it's to put it all in one spot. I laid everything out on my bed. This is the result of taking everything out of my closet. And oh wow, I feel a little overwhelmed. It feels like more than I thought that I had. Step number two is to take all of the items that you have laid out and sort them into categories. The categories are tops, bottoms, clothes that should be hung, jackets, coats, suits, socks, underwear, bags, accessories, clothes for specific events, for example, swimsuits, uniforms, etc., and shoes. So now I have everything sorted into piles. I'm a little less overwhelmed because when it's like sorted into different categories, it seems a little less overwhelming. It doesn't look as like as much stuff. So the third step is to take every single item one by one, feel it in your hands, look at it and ask yourself, does this item spark joy? I know that can seem really cheesy and at first you're gonna feel kind of crazy, but I found that the longer I used the method, the easier that became because I really was looking at clothes that I was keeping for a multitude of reasons, even though it didn't make me happy. In addition to asking, does this item bring me joy? I also ask my own guiding questions just because like I said, there are gonna be items that you don't keep necessarily because they make you happy. For example, I have a pair of like workout shorts that are really small, like spandex type things, and they don't make me happy. They're not the most flattering, but I wear them underneath dresses. So I keep them because it just is convenient to do so. So my guiding questions are, does this item fit well? Does this item pair with my color palette? Because I tend to wear things that are gray, black, white, neutral, anything in the neutral color family. And then the third question is, does this item pair well with other items in my wardrobe? So KonMari says to start with your off-season clothing just because you are more likely to be a little more ruthless with getting rid of things because, you know, for example, if you do your in-season clothing first, you might have just worn a top last week and your mind's gonna go, well, I just wore that. Whereas things that you haven't worn in the longest time, it's easier to get rid of them. But I'm gonna start with jackets because I have a lot more jackets than I should have. 
Okay, so I just got done with all of my tops, and honestly, I am I think I did pretty well. This is my to keep pile. Those are all the hangers of the ones I'm not keeping, and this is my get rid of pile right there. Now, full transparency, this is an item that I've kept in my closet for years, and it is my high school letterman jacket. I have never worn it out, and I will never wear it because that's kind of strange. Um, but I just, it's the one sentimental item I own besides photos that I haven't been able to get rid of. And a lot of it's just tied to like memories and you know, my mom spent a lot of money on it. So a lot of it's guilt, but I think I'm ready to pass it on. But what I'm going to do, I think is I'm going to take a photo just because my kids are very active and they are in, they are in athletics and so I kind of want to like show them one day just you know what I did and um, how I succeeded in that or whatever so I think I'm just going to take a photo and I'm finally going to pass this on which is a really big deal because it's been about two years of me looking at it knowing it's taking up space in my closet but it's time for it to go. I am just about done. I already have two bags full of clothes. I honestly thought I was going to have maybe one. Um, I've gone through this. I have to go through shoes and I still have like event specific pieces and pajamas, underwear, bras, that kind of thing. So these are the only shoes I have. I am super minimal about shoes and I'm sure as you can see it's because I wear the heck out of my shoes. Like I keep shoes for, oh goodness, I mean sometimes I'll wear them you know, like these three shoes here, I pretty much alternate between them every day. And I might wear these for a year, you know, every other day before I get rid of them. Whereas they are starting to wear out. You see they have discoloring here. But I'm actually going to keep these until I can get another pair because I use them all the time. So even though I'm not in love with them, I use them all the time. And I think the only pair of shoes I'm going to get rid of are these ones. And I've never liked them to begin with. I didn't like the style, but I bought them to go with an outfit, which I got rid of today. So these are going to go and the rest are going to stay. What previously looked like this now looks like this. Step number five is to fold most of your clothing except for the items that will look happier hanging up. In the very beginning of this video, I talked to you guys about how there are certain things in the method that I don't use and that I do my own way. And this is one of those things. So I hang up probably a good 98% of my clothing because I don't have a dresser and I just have a big closet. So it makes sense to me to embrace the space and not bring in additional storage. Step number six is to hang clothes so that they rise to the right. So Con Marie's explanation of this, in my own words, is something along the lines of when you look at an arrow, if you look at an arrow pointing down with the item or with the arrow falling to the right, it gives you like a heavy feeling, whereas looking at an arrow rising to the right makes you feel lighter. Now I will be honest with you, my gut instinct tells me to put my heavier items in the back of my closet, things like my coats, especially because I live in a really warm climate and I hardly ever wear them. Um, and starting with my lighter clothes and moving up towards the heavier in the back, but this is the first time that I have decided to organize my closet in the way that Con Marie said because I want to follow the method in that sense and see how that works for me and see if it does make me feel lighter. Here is the finished product. As you can see, these are two onesies like pajamas. Then you have jackets kind of from the warmest to the coolest to cardigans. There is one dress in here. The KonMari method um, recommends folding as much as possible, but here's the reason. Before I had all of like my lighter clothes here and my heavier clothes there, and part of the reason was because I used this area right here for jeans and workout clothes, but now having it organized this way, this kind of runs into that and blocks my view. So I just went ahead and hung up all of my pants here. And then again, long sleeve shirts, two short sleeve shirts, 
to tank tops and then over here you have shorts. In the very back here, I just put some bags. I have one purse and then a small bag inside of there. This is a shirt for our business, so I don't wear collared shirts like that, but in the case that we need to represent our business, I will wear that. And then that is a triathlon suit, which I hope to do something like that again, so hope to get some wear out of that. And then down here, we have pajamas and swimsuits underwear and bras. Also in Con Marie's book, she uses a very specific method of folding clothes, but I'm not even gonna do that because I've done that in the past and to me, it took up more time trying to keep my clothes standing upright as opposed to stacking them like that, like most people do. And this is not about for me trying to be like die hard on a certain method. This is always about living my life the most efficiently in the way that's most productive and makes me the happiest. So that is most efficient for me. That's how I'm gonna fold my clothes. Step number seven is to fold your socks the Con Marie way. And again, this is something that I just don't do. If I lived by myself, I probably would do that just because in my head it makes more sense not to stretch out your socks to be able to see them looking nicely together. I feel like you would just take better care of them. But in this place in my life, it's not something that I follow. I would love to go through and fold them the way that Con Marie says to, but I rarely wear socks anyways. I only wear them to the gym, so this is mainly my husband's drawer. And... I know that within five seconds, within day one of him going to grab a pair of socks, he would just throw them all down anyway. And so. the eighth and final step is to tie up your bags and donate or discard of items immediately. You want to get them out of your house as quickly as now possible. That the clothes are all finished, I'm going to go through and take my hangers. I'm going to get rid of any of the colored ones and I'm going to switch out hangers on my husband's side, the colored ones, and put the white ones just because I like having it more uniform. So I'm going to do that, get rid of the rest, and I'm going to take these today immediately to the thrift store. Um, and also one of those bags I'm going to sort into like things that my family members would want, but I'm getting them out of the house ASAP, which I highly recommend because it's super tempting to go back in the bag and want to pull stuff back out. A big part of this method and minimalism in general is not bringing more stuff into your house. It's about keeping a space that only has the essentials, the things that you need, the things that make you happy, spark joy. And that's what I'm gonna focus on with my closet in the future. I'm going to try to bring in less stuff. Granted, a lot of the things that you saw that I gave away in this video were items that I bought for a tropical vacation, but I want to focus on bringing less stuff in and really being intentional about the pieces that I buy. So I wanna buy a bit more high-end pieces that are gonna last longer, and that's gonna be my focus. I think that's important, just as important as decluttering a space and feeling good about that. It's important to come up with a plan or to come up with a method to make sure that that step, or to make sure that that space maintains that nice, homey, comfortable feel that you feel good about right now. Now that the process is over, I'm feeling pretty good. I, this is something that I definitely think that you should be doing often. Like I said last year, the beginning of last year, I had, I didn't have a whole lot of things. And then throughout the year, stuff just kind of came into my closet. I put off getting rid of it for different reasons. And now I took the time to get rid of them and I feel so much better. If you would like to continue seeing videos like this where I go through the process in different areas of my home, give it a thumbs up and let me know. Also, I'm going to link in the description box below. I have a Facebook group that is dedicated to my 30 day minimal wellness challenge. This challenge is different than a lot of the minimalism challenges that you see because I incorporate kind of mindset, overall health and wellness and just feeling good about yourself. It's not just about like decluttering, purging, getting rid of things. Um, so if you would like to join that group, I will link it down below. Please join that group and share your journey with us. Also in that group, you will find the 30 day minimal wellness challenge link so you can download it yourself. Um, again, if you guys like these videos, give it a thumbs up. Thank you for coming along and I will see you in the next one. Bye.